Welcome in to a new series from the DNVR Avalanche. We're jumping in with less than two weeks to go to the start of the regular season, previewing everything and anything 2021 for the Colorado Avalanche. I'm Nathan Rudolph. Of course, AJ Hayfley here with me as well. Let's let's just start it off. We're going to be doing everything in the Avs lineup in this series, but what better place to start than the most important position on the ice in goaltender? AJ, no changes for the Avs at this position. Grubauer and Francois are the men returning in a net for the Avs. How important are they going to be? Well, as we as we saw in the seven game playoff series, um, pretty important, right? I, I mean, they, they didn't have, uh, they they didn't have either one of them in the, Dallas, uh, yeah. yeah, they didn't have either one of them in the latter half of that series and look at the difference that it made. Uh, True. Pablo, Pablo Francois was, uh, I mean, both of them got hurt, uh, were, were, were hurt in that series and it made all the difference in the world. Cause when we talk about that series, when any, anybody that talks about the abs talks about that series, the thing that everybody starts with is, yeah, but and then it gets it gets around to Michael Hutchinson and the third goaltender and the fact that they played a third goaltender against arguably the league's best backup netminder in a game seven in the playoffs, and they it, damn near won the game, <laughs> and and they came very very close. They were one save from from winning that game, yep. and. You have to think that either one of them, no, no, no bones against uh, against Hutchinson, who performed admirably in the role, but you have to think that either one of those guys would have been able to get that job done. For sure. Uh, let's take a little bit of a, a broader scope view at Grubauer's last season. We can pull up his stats here. These aren't super pretty to look at, but they're nothing to scoff at either. Uh, 2.6 goals against average, not amazing. 19 points or. 0.916 rather save percentage. That's maybe a touch above league average, but nothing incredible. Yeah, and I think the big thing that will stand out there is the record. Yep. You know, 18, just 18, 12, and 4. Right. And if you if you add that all up, that's an 18 and 16 record with the guy that's supposed to be their surefire starter. That doesn't that doesn't stand out to you. Um that does not that does not inspire a ton of confidence. It does not scream. I'm the man. And I think that's why we saw Francois encroach upon his playing time, even even not not considering the the injury issues that it, that, that cropped up last year. We saw that there was an inconsistency of play from him. You know, yeah. we the the year prior, he had taken the job from Semyon Varlamov and then played fantastic down the stretch and then was very good in the postseason. And it felt like, yeah, okay. It took some while. It, it took some time for him to adjust to Colorado. Now he has, and now he's good. This was the investment. This was why half of the league was after this guy when he was available from Washington. And then last year, we didn't see that growth. We didn't see that transition. He started off the season very well, and then it was very up and down until the end of the year when he absolutely caught fire again. But Ian Cole running into him at the stadium series ended his regular season. And then he got into the postseason and again, picked it right back up. He was good in the yeah. playoffs for them. It's that, I don't want to call it a mid-season slump, but certainly bogged down by inconsistency in both years here in Colorado for group yeah. hour. Absolutely. And it's, it's one of those players that you can get a little bit frustrated with it because you've seen the highs. You've seen just how good this guy can be. And you just needed a little bit more often out of him to have him really secure that starter spot, not only with the abs, but in the NHL. Um, so I think the big story here for the two of us, at least with Grubauer though, is we think he is that guy. We think he can absolutely be the abs starter and when I say ab starter, I mean one capable of taking them to where they need to go. 
Uh, I I would agree with you. Um, I think that that's the the real conversation. Uh, the expectation for him this year, he proves it. He's in a contract year. He's already thirty years old. This is this is not a you know this is not a twenty five year old goaltender. You know the oh he's got such promise. This is do or die for his career as a starter. This is yep. it. This is if he's if he's gonna be the man in Colorado. It has to happen now. They are trying to chase the Stanley Cup with and 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 everybody's biggest question mark for Colorado is goaltending. You and I don't feel necessarily feel that way, but Grubauer, the guy. Yeah. I mean, he's 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 the we expect him to be healthy this year. We expect him to roll in and just take over that job and play to the level of. I need I need a new contract. You have to keep me. It's a lot easier to win a Stanley Cup when you have a bona fide starter. To raise it up, as it were, when you have a bona fide starter. Um, that's not the correct way to put it. I should say when you have a bona fide number one. Tandems can work, but when you get to the playoffs and you don't have that guy you can lean on, things get tougher for sure. The big question with Philip Grubauer, honestly, AJ and I aren't that worried about the statistics. The big question is, can he stay healthy? And I think this goes both ways a little bit. I think it's a little quick to jump to the conclusion that he's injury prone from one season where he had, as you mentioned, the freak thing of his own player running into him. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we saw he clearly had splody groins in the playoffs. Yeah, between Ian Cole running into him, um, you know, he had a minor injury earlier in the year as well. Uh, so it was it was just a tough year for him. But this is not a guy with a lengthy injury history. Uh, this is this was a guy that got hurt on three separate occasions in one season, and yep. it, was, it was one like minor minor issue earlier in the year. Sure, and then obviously the the Stadium Series injury, and then Game One against Dallas. You know, he was getting lit up, and then all of a sudden, he made a save, and it's one of those non-contact injuries, which are sometimes the scariest. Yep. And he was done. I mean, he it, that was it for him. It's 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 honestly a little funny that all of the conversation around him has revolved around health because of the fact that it hasn't really been a major issue except last season. And so, you know, we can't we can't approach this conversation without acknowledging it. But really, if he's healthy, I think he's I think he's fine. And Colorado's in good shape. I agree. And look, his track record, things look fine there. For most of that, he was a backup, but for his run in Washington near the end, where he was essentially the starter, at least in the regular season, he was healthy for all of that. His first year in Colorado, I think he missed like a couple of days, but was essentially fully healthy, including up through their playoff run that year. So right now, last year, as far as injury concerns are concerned, is the, it, it was the outlier. And yeah. and you remember in, in the, his first year in Colorado, he took that job and he played every other day consistently down the stretch. Yep. Um, the only time Varley played, Varley only got the last, he got two games. He got the game 82 where their seed was they were locked in they had no they had nothing to play for except Nathan McKinnon's 100 points yep and it did not matter and then there was a back to back as well uh in Denver and that was the, that was the only time Barley played down that stretch Grubauer has shown that he can he can handle that job uh that he can play over a prolonged period and then he and then obviously he was the man in the postseason through those couple of rounds and he played and again his entire postseason career in Colorado has been good. Our, his worst performance was that first period against Dallas where he got hurt. And he never had the chance to redeem himself. That's what this season is. It's him redeeming himself. A redemption arc for Grubauer. Even so, with the season we have coming up, with the absolute sprint of a schedule that we have, even if Pavel Francos is in a backup role, we are absolutely going to see him get used heavily when we're talking about the Avs playing seven back-to-backs, 
numbers upon numbers of three games in four days as well. I think every back-to-back just about they're playing three games in four days one way or the other. Um, So they're going to use them a lot. And that's good news if you're a believer, certainly. Uh, We can bring up his stats as well. His stats are pretty gaudy to look at. That record, big, better save percentage and better goals against average than Grubauer last year. But how real are these numbers? That is the big question. You know, when you look at, again, we'll start with the record just because there's such, that's where I think the biggest disparity lies. Yeah. Pablo Franzos was getting the quintessential backup games last year. He was. You know, he was in in every back-to-back situation, he got the easy game. The, you know, he the was easier he opponent. Was, right. He was the guy that they were that they were like, oh, we're gonna, you know, we're oh, we're playing Detroit tonight. Okay, you're the man. Go get him, Frankie. You know, he was getting he was getting the softer side of the schedule. Now an avalanche team that would regularly drop a touchdown on teams when he was in right. There. And his goal support, certainly in the first part part of the year, his goal support was among the best in the league. So he could I mean, remember. He was the goaltender in Colorado's nine to four win, where yep. he gave up four goals and played awful that day. The Az were losing that game three to two. <laughs> yeah. Like they they were he was he was bad in that game. And none of us remember that because they buried Nashville that day in yep. in in the goals. It it was and, and that was that was kind of Frankie's season. It always felt charmed. Now, to his credit, those numbers are those numbers. That's that's reality. He performed to that level. He played that well. And then down, you know, when when Grubauer got hurt, he stepped up. He played every game. He did everything that he had to, except for the one game against Detroit where uh, Hutchinson played. But otherwise, Frankie Frankie did his thing. And so. he elevated his play when they absolutely needed it the most. And up until the postseason where when he got in, he was he was already nursing a hip injury uh, when he got into the game against Dallas in, in the postseason. But as, as much as you and I are like skeptics of the whole Francois is actually the better goaltender, there's no denying he had a very good year and, and that he earned – the extension that Colorado gave him and that that extension could end up being a major steal for them. If his play stays at that level and he's producing a 923 save percentage and he's going to win, you know, 65% of his starts and he gives them quality start after quality start. And, you know, then all of a sudden $2 million for him looks like a major steal. You you've let us right into our big question here for Pavel and, It's very simple. Do it again. If he can repeat his performance from what was technically his rookie year in the NHL, the Avs have a potential steal of a starting goaltender. They, I I mean, at at the, at the very least, they'll have a high end backup. They'll have their own Anton Kudobin. Yep. You know, they'll have their own situation where instead of everybody looking at goaltenders and thinking, oh boy, they're looking at Colorado's net and they're saying boy that thing is that that is a fortified position for them especially when you consider the kids that are coming up behind them so this it's really this is probably the position of greatest weakness on the roster right now um maybe weakness is the wrong word maybe uncertainty is what i'm it it would be more appropriate yep but it's also the position that has the most potential to not change one bit but have the conversation around it completely flip on its head as the year goes on. So I I don't want to undersell Francois, but I think as we as we move into our expectations for him, the reality for us is for him to continue to push Philip Grubauer. If he peaks out, does become that starter caliber goaltender, fantastic. The Avs absolutely hit a home run, but even if they don't, get that out of them. If they get a quality one B a quality backup, whatever you want to call it, that's a win. Absolutely. Um, You know, competition breeds excellence and the better, the better that Frankie plays, the more it pushes Grubauer 
it's either going to create a better Grubauer or if Frankie's just going to straight take the job from him. Yep. Either yep. way, the better that Francois plays, it creates a better situation for Colorado. The idea, the idea here is Frankie is right in the heart of his prime. This is as good as he'll ever be. It's time. It, you know, th- this is it. The, this is this is the a good situation for him. It's a good situation for the Avs. He's gonna push if he's ever gonna make a case to be a starting goaltender. It's this is a pretty good one because he's gonna get a lot of playing time this year. The shape of the Avs goal will be decided this year. Coming into the end of this season, we could be saying Grubauer and Francois are the guys for the future, or we could be saying we're yoloing with Adam Werner in 2022 we don't know but that's gonna do it for this very first episode of the dnvr avalanche season preview thank you everyone for watching before you go be sure to head on over to the dnvr.com and check out all of our written articles and content on the site if you really like it consider subscribing and of course absolutely free to like this video and subscribe for all of the rest of these videos coming out over the next two weeks. Really appreciate you. If you do so, it helps us out a ton. That's it for this one, and we will have another video for you very soon.